Hey there, and welcome back. My name is Gardner. I've been running my YouTube channel for seven years. In that time, I've made a career out of video editing, and I'm really excited to share some of the things that I've learned with you. One of the very last steps in video production is rendering your final edit. For the uninitiated, it might seem complicated, but I'll walk you through each step and all the profiles and settings that are available to you in Caden Live. To start the rendering process, we first need to determine what we want to render. Do we want to render only a portion of the project or the entire timeline? If we just want a section of the timeline, we can move our playhead to the start position and then press the I key for in point. Then we can move our playhead to the end or out position and press the O key for out. You'll see that this marker here adjusts with each key press, and you can grab this thumb here in the middle to move it around or drag each edge to readjust the in and out points. Keep in mind that the Z key will remove everything in this zone from the timeline unless you've changed that hotkey, so just be careful. Now if you want to render the entire timeline, you don't have to set the in and out zones, as they'll be ignored. So you're now ready to tweak some rendering preferences. Select Project, and then choose Render. Or you can hit Control Return to start the process. Now you should see this window, and the basic settings that you'll need to adjust to suit your needs. At the top we have these three tabs. Render, job queue, and scripts. Render contains the rendering options. Job queue displays the current projects queued for rendering. Next we have the output file path. This is where you tell Caden Live where to actually save your files to. For our purposes, the default is fine. However, if you click the folder button here, then you'll be able to pick another directory to save to. Next we have the format selection. First up, we have these buttons. The star will save a render profile to your favorites. The download icon will allow you to download more render profiles. The new icon will let you create a new profile. The edit icon will let you edit an existing profile. And finally, the delete icon lets you delete a profile. Next up, we have this scrollable select panel that allows you to choose a preset. I won't go over every preset here, but I will cover the basics. WebM is a free and open source audio and video codec created by Google that has spotty support among video hosting websites. It also has larger file sizes on average and takes longer to encode. MP4 is currently the most widely supported format with great support on most platforms. It has recently become less patent encumbered too, which is a bonus. Now, MP4 H.265 is a more efficient encoding for Ultra HD content, comparing standard MP4, which typically uses H.264 encoding, with H.265, you'll end up with files that are significantly smaller that have no discernible difference when playing back. Now, the options we've discussed so far rely on the CPU to do the heavy lifting here. However, if you have a GPU with media encoding, it'll take significantly less time to render your project using an option under the GPU testing header. NVENC H.264 has two options, CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, and VBR, which stands for variable bitrate. These are great for projects up to 1080p. There's also NVENC H.265 for content above 1080p. However, all three NVENC options are only available for NVIDIA graphics cards. If you don't have a GTX card on Linux, these options probably won't work for you. RTX support for NVENC is not that great right now. If you have an Intel or AMD graphics chip, selecting the appropriately labeled VA API option will be able to hardware accelerate the rendering process for you. For example, on the Librem 14, using VA API Intel is the best option. And it's also worth noting that there are profiles here to export only the audio of your project or export the video of your project as an image sequence. Now under this, we have a quality slider. This is the compression quality and maxing it out is usually recommended. Now here we can choose if we want to render the full project or the selected zone. You can also render a guide zone if you've added one to your project. We can also select the more options checkbox if we want a little bit more control. The first option that we see is the actual parameters passed to MLT, which is the rendering framework that Caden Live uses. Unless you know what you're doing, you definitely don't want to mess with this one. Encode speed lets you adjust how much time the encoder spends on each frame. Encoder Threads gives you control over how many CPU threads the encoder utilizes. Parallel Processing allows the encoder to use multiple CPU threads to encode faster. Scanning lets you force either progressive or interlace scan fields. It's recommended that you leave this set to auto. Rescale allows you to output your render to a different resolution than the project settings. Export Audio lets you decide to render the audio or not. 
Stem Audio Export will render each audio track separately from each other. Overlay allows you to bake in a timecode or frame counter to the rendered file. Render using proxy clips renders the file using the proxy clips instead of the original quality clips. Play After Render will obviously play the render once it's done exporting. And Export Metadata will save all the metadata of the project into your rendered file. Then we have the Render to File and Generate Script buttons. Render to File will begin the rendering process. And Generate Script will create a script that will allow you to uh, run the rendering as a batch operation. So what profile should you use? That's the question. If you plan on releasing your video on YouTube, uh, something H.264 or H.265 is going to be perfect. Uh, if you want to use Odyssey, uh, that's again going to be H.264. And obviously using uh, the VA API or NVENC, if you have those features available on your machine, are going to be faster than trying to use the CPU to do the encoding. But I'll have to leave the details up to you on that one. Well. That's everything that you need to know about rendering in Caden Live, and that's actually going to do it for this series as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series and that you learned a thing or two along the way. I really want to say thank you to Purism for having me create this series. It's been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate their support of the Linux video editing community. They're great. And I want to thank you for watching as well. Uh, make sure that you hit that like button uh, and let us know what you think of this series down below. Purism wants to invest in the community, and if you let them know what you want to see next from them, I'm sure they'll greatly appreciate that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I've been Gardner Bryant, and I'll see you guys later.